Thank you. Uh, this is Chin Paulin from National Yangming Jiaohong University. It's my great pleasure to be here to introduce our work in brain and cognitive age estimation. As we know that there are some of these, they may be high risk for elderly, um, for, as we can notice here. And so the problem is that whether all elderly means bendy. Okay, here is the problem we want to ask. However, we notice that some of the stuff, uh, elderly, they may be very healthy. But on the other hand, some elderly, they, they, they are really offending or uh, suffer by disease. So the problem is that how can we identify those subjects from the old elderly? And also the, another report also noticed that such kinds of uh, um, um, situation may be mediated by the country they are high or low income. So um, the, the question is that whether we can identify or provide a, a good marker for such kinds of brain age. So we can notice that the idea, of course, for the, um, there are a lot of factors that may affect our, our, our brain uh, health. For example, as we can notice here, and also that the idea for us is to the best way to have successful aging. Here is our normal, normal curvature. So how can we identify for those subjects and help them to have successful aging? Of course, some of the, the, the elderly may be suffer by disease or they may be high risk in disease. So we can notice that also face of accelerated aging. So the idea or the question is that whether we can just use chronological age, that means the age in our ID, to mean or to refer to biological age. And of course, the answer is not. And the, the best, uh, biomarker to be measured. There are a lot of um, markers uh, listed here. And these different uh, markers, they can refer to different uh, disease or maybe more sensitive to the different problem. For example, gene or uh, arterial uh, pressure and muscle age and so on. However, for us, we want to know for neurogenic disease or the, the um, some uh, elderly uh, problem, for example, in Alzheimer or Parkinson, then brain is the more uh, significant parts that to be measured. And as we list here, there are a lot of um, factors that change following ages. So uh, the here we want to know is that whether we can identify or to estimate the best biomarker to refer to aging. And here we notice that from the, a lot of reports they, they show uh, foreign uh, aging uh, changes, uh, foreign development periods or elderly uh, periods, we can notice the change in the brain. And also that we know the foreign age, even after the uh, age of 30 years old, and actually the brain already been uh, slowly uh, decreased. However, the brain will be deteriorated uh, actually for, uh, after the uh, age of 70. And not only for the brain volume, but also for the cortical thickness, uh, five meter connections, and also functional activity, and also even five meter lesions, they also increase or have uh, that de increase the lesion or decrease the activity uh, for an aging. And also, uh, we notice that such kinds of uh, structure uh, deficit or uh, entropy that it high link with brain cognitive functions. And also we also notice that um, following the aging, there are some of the brain function that may decrease. Of course, some of the brain function may be not. And such kinds of changes may not be equally to each subject. So the, the work or the question we want to ask is that whether we can provide a good marker to indicate brain age and also cognitive aging. So here is the method. Uh, following the uh, conventional methods that we, we noticed we, we can work on is to include uh, a big data of healthy subjects and then have the calculation. And then we can still see the, the, uh, the changes following uh, different age 
and the parameter valent, for example, as I show here. And recently, there are a lot of AI methods to be applied. So here we want to use is that whether we can use AI techniques by this uh, big data and see or we can predict some subjects that have, for example, in the same age or in the same um, sex, whether they have the same uh, performance or they may be in high risk of disease. So here is the question and, uh, and also the work that we want to perform. And um, there are a lot, lot of uh, reference in the world that have been reported, uh, for example, of grand grand meter valent or uh, uh, cortical sickness and valent and also neural connectivity and also uh, curvature and sickness of the cortical uh, valent and also the connectivity index and myelin and also functional activity. They may change following the age and also can be used to be uh, the marker for aging uh, process. And also people notice that the gap between a brain estimated age and chronological age, that means our ID age, uh, that the as increase of the age, the gap, that means increase of the uh, risk for age, uh, elderly disease. For example, someone with a chronological age of 70, however, the brain age estimate to be 80, that means the subject have 10 years old gap uh, to in compare to the same uh, chronological age people. That means this is why these subjects have high risk in mortality. And also, so, uh, there are a lot of papers talking about such kinds of gap. Maybe, maybe a good index to be represented to um, risk of uh, the subject to get uh, a neurogenic disease. And also, uh, there are some also part paper talking about, for example, for some of the uh, subjects, they may be, they have, have a traumatic brain injury, Alzheimer, schizophrenia, and also epilepsy. So the subject may also have increased um, brain age gap. And that means they have a more big loadings in compared to health subjects. And here is the flow, uh, workflow of our work. Then we, we have a, a healthy database and uh, more notably is that we acquire healthy subject in our uh, three Tesla MRI in National Army University and around uh, 20, uh, 27 country healthy elderly. And also we detract the feature of following these subjects and try to help our AI models. Then we can identify subjects with their brain age and also cognitive performance. As we show here, we can identify some of the brain HLP, that means that have the high uh, burden in the uh, different co uh, cognitive functions, as, as I uh, list here. So uh, following the, the works, we can notice that uh, in our uh, database uh, from 20 to uh, 90, then we can see the global change of, of the the subjects and the following the age of change. And also by using this model, we can notice that for Alzheimer patients, they have a larger gap in capital healthy and also large burden in their cognitive functions. And also increase of the gap, that means that decrease of uh, uh, cognitive uh, past as, as uh, and MMC or CASI. So the, here is the result which we notice that such kinds of index may be really useful to identify or to indicate subjects with um, disease or maybe can be used to pre predict so, so, uh, these subjects. For example, here's another example that um, for in, each individual, uh, one Alzheimer individual and also another one uh, mild cognitive impairment individuals, then we can identify the entropy region in some brain area and also indicate the change of their cognitive functions. And this work has been patterned by Taiwan and two years ago and this year. And also we have been we have applied it to estimate 
to know more elderly, for example, this one, we can notice that oh, uh, the, um, the brain age is 58. However, this one is only 52 years old. That means this one has larger brain age gap. And the most uh, targeted loading is the, the, the response time or this one uh, targeted functions actually as uh, in compared to the same age is more uh, poor. So the, th this report can tell the subjects that to, to be no, more noticed that how he have to uh, more training in cognitive response and also try to uh, avoid uh, the risk to further neurodegenerative uh, disease. So um, today I, uh, I'm here to sharing with you that uh, aging is not friendly. And also we know that a, a lot of a clock in, the, in our body, not only in the brain. So if you have healthy life, that means that, that the age may be decelerated. However, there are some factors that may, they may increase or uh, lead to uh, age acceleration. So um, the best way is to um, have more activity, as I this here, and also good sleep, and also social activity. And also, uh, in this way, it's the best um, way to protect or keep brain health. And on the other hand, what we work today, it, what I introduced today is the quantitative and uh, measurable uh, index to such uh, cognitive and brain um, age, and also refer to the uh, brain health and also risk for further you know, degenerative uh, disease. Thank you. Here is my uh, team and also my collaborators in Taiwan and in the world. And also thanks for the support from the uh, Ministry of Science and Technology. Thank you.